Greetings and salutations guys! The video you're about to watch was shot over the last three or four weeks and contains some of my initial experiments with vacuum infusion. That, however, is not the real surprise of this video, so be sure to stay tuned for the very end of the video. With that said, let's cue the video. Hi guys! Welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here in the workshop. Or at least part of this video is going to be here in the workshop. I don't have any experience with vacuum infusion and I want to fix that. I want to see if I can use vacuum infusion for some of the upcoming projects aboard Athena. And I've got a pretty cool idea for a little mini project that I can do. And as an added bonus, that mini project also gives me the chance to take our new CNC machine for a spin. Why bother with vacuum infusion, you might ask? Well, for one, I've already got all of the gear I need from when I built that homemade hot vac type setup for drying out Athena's hull. This is the vacuum pump I used for that system and the catch pot, so all I really need to play with infusion are a few consumables, but we'll get back to those a little later. So it's not going to cost me a lot to get some experience with vacuum infusion. Add to that the fact that it might boost my productivity aboard Athena this summer. It's pretty freaking cool to look at, and it's going to be a lot of fun. What's not to like? Just a quick little heads up, if you watch my videos regularly, you might be wondering what the heck is the rudder doing back on the table? That's simply just because this is a pre-recorded video. Right now, I'm actually with Ava in Los Angeles, as you might see in the very end of this video. Ooh, what have we got here? Carbon fiber, fiberglass's super sexy cousin. Now, what kind of exciting stuff do we have in here? We've got some vacuum tape, which is basically just butyl tape, some six millimeter hose, spiral tubing, a special hardener, the world's smallest amount of peel ply, and some hose clamps. And that's basically all the consumables I need, with one small exception. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry if I messed up the Imperial March there. I'm uh, much more of a Star Trek fan. Here we've got some vacuum film, and I do believe this is the smallest quantity I could purchase. And this is what the website where it purchased this to refers to as flow medium. This is essentially just a mesh that should ensure that the resin flows throughout the entire part. This should more or less be everything I need. Right now you might be wondering, but what the heck are we going to be making? And that is of course a very reasonable question. About a year and a half ago, when I tore the deck off Athena, I saved a little bit of the teak. And that's this teak right here. I figured I might be able to use this for something cool. So for instance, I could take one of these pieces and infuse some carbon fiber onto it. And then I could take this material and turn it into something cool on the CNC machine. And I think the first step is gonna be to get this cleaned up a little bit. I've only saved the best looking pieces of teak and these actually do look pretty good. To clean these up, it would be awesome to run them through a planer. We don't have a planer here in the workshop yet. But fortunately, I know someone who has a planer. Feast your eyes on these awesome looking pieces of teak. Pay no attention to the rudder that has magically turned itself into a pile of rubble. But do direct your attention right here. I did pick out some of the nicer pieces, but I mean, this looks almost brand new. Off camera, I've made a little bit of an experiment here because there were a few things I wanted to test out. And I think that was a good idea because this didn't quite go according to plan. Here on the back, there are some noticeable dry spots, but uh, let's go ahead and get this opened up and take a closer look. Here is just a piece of carbon. This is carbon that's sandwiched around a piece of teak. And here's teak sandwiched around some carbon. 
I tried putting a piece of plexiglass on top of this to see what kind of finish that would give me, but let's see if we can get that off. Oh, well that looks pretty nice. Unlike the side that was facing down on the vacuum bag, this is all wrinkly, it's not shiny, it's not nice. The reason for this little experiment was to see if I could wet out the carbon fiber even though it was sandwiched in between two pieces of tea. Well, this piece certainly cleaned up nice and well, it feels like the two pieces of teak are pretty well adhered. This is quite possibly the most elaborate test ever to see if in fact that carbon fiber was wetted out. I'm using the CNC to carve out a little circle so that we can check out the inside of that thing. Some might argue that this is a little over the top, but uh, you never know when a circle shaped thing might come in useful. I'm still very new to the CNC machine, but I just, I can't put into words how much I love this thing. It is so cool to be able to draw something in SolidWorks and then just have it magically appear. Yep, very, very cool indeed. Even if it is just a random circle shaped doohickey. I'd say I got pretty good adhesion. Now this does look a little bit dry though. I know all of this seems a little bit disorganized right now, but uh, trust me, it will all make sense a little later in the video. Hi guys, who is ready to do some more vacuum infusion experiments? I know I am, and I've got everything almost set up right here. Let's go through the different components in the stack here and get everything layered up. I've gone ahead and applied two coats of wax to this piece of aluminum here so that we know that the parts will have a relatively easy time releasing. For the first part, we will need a piece of teak here. I've already gone ahead and coated this with epoxy and sanded that, so hopefully this time around, the teak won't absorb any epoxy. Next is four layers of carbon fiber, and this time around, I've oriented the fibers at 45 degrees to each other for optimal strength. There we go, four layers of carbon fiber. On top of this, we're gonna have little pieces of teak where the grain is oriented in this direction, the bottom layer has the grains running this way. This should end up being a very strong whatever this is gonna turn into. This is gonna be the first of two doohickeys in today's experiment. And for this one, vacuum infusion might not be the obvious one, but for the other one, it certainly is. Bam, 20 layers of carbon fiber. Now, the reason for the tape is just to make sure that I don't mess up the fibers because it's very easy to get this to fray. I put down this blue piece of tape just to not get wax everywhere. So let's go ahead and remove this. Now we can go ahead and apply the vacuum tape along the edge. And I'm also gonna wrap some vacuum tape around the tube here to get a good seal. There are all kinds of fancy through bag connectors you can buy, but uh, just a bit of vacuum tape seemed to work out okay in the first experiment. Now I'll go ahead and repeat the process up here. A layer of peel ply and then some flow medium. And then the last layer to go on here is of course the vacuum film. This is all pretty flat, so I'm hoping I can get away with not putting in any pleats. Let's get the bag clamped off so we can check to see if it's airtight. Oh, and those little dinky hose clamps I showed you in the beginning of the video, they turned out to be way too weak for this hose. This is pretty freaking stiff, but this guy does a good job. Okay, let's get this guy fired up. More than likely, the bag is not gonna be airtight to start out with, but that's okay, we'll fix that. So here we go. There is definitely a hissing sound somewhere, so now it's just a matter of checking all of the vacuum tape. Oh, that helped a lot. As you can see, we're pulling quite the vacuum here, and also the sound from the vacuum pump has changed. So I think we're pretty close to airtight now, but. The ultimate test is just to turn off the pump, 
and leave it for five minutes to see if this moves. There is no need to wait five minutes here. I can see the needle moving. So let's check everything. At least I can't see the needle moving anymore, so that's a good sign, but let's just let this sit for five minutes. I'm starting to think I should either have put in the pleats or made the vacuum bag bigger. I think either one would have made it easier to seal the bag up. But uh, yeah, that is why we do experiments. Yep, there is some kind of leak in the bag. God dang it. I had quite the little leak finding session here. In the end, I ended up going with the nuclear option and just repacked everything. The good news is this is now airtight. Let's get this show on the road and get some resin. Well, God dang fiddlesticks. Just as I was mixing up the resin, my lavalier mic ran out of batteries. So now I have a bunch of footage of the vacuum infusion without any sound. But uh, let me give you the play by play. After having thoroughly mixed the epoxy, there were a lot of tiny air bubbles trapped in it, and you don't really want that. So I used the vacuum pump to degas the epoxy. As you can see here, it's bubbling away. After a while, bubbles stopped forming, so I turned off the vacuum pump and pulled out the epoxy. I dipped the feed hose into the cup and slowly opened up the hose clamp. And that brings you guys back up to speed. This looks pretty good. The annoying thing is we'll have to wait two days until we can open this. Dang it. So, uh, yep, I will see you guys in two days. Greetings and salutations, guys. It's been two very long days and I feel kind of like a kid waiting to unwrap his Christmas present. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and tear into this. Whoa, I mean, that wasn't really the point of this exercise, but look at the teak. It looks so cool. It looks kind of like it's floating in this little channel of carbon fiber. That's very cool. What's not so cool is this sample here. It clearly has a dry spot here in the middle. Oh, Jesus, that was quite the struggle. That looks pretty cool, but I mean, it's completely useless for what I'm trying to do here. As far as the second experiment, there is a definite dry spot here in the middle, like I said. I'm guessing this happened because of the thickness of this laminate, but I'm not sure. I'll have to check with some experts. But yeah, this is why I do experiments, because in the very near future, I might lay up the two shells of the new rudder using vacuum infusion. And having something like that happen on an entire half of a rudder would suck really bad. Yep, looks perfect. Now let's take this and turn it into something cool.
there must be something wrong with our CNC machine. The only thing it seems to want to make are these weird circle shaped things. And what's even more weird is the fact that this circle shaped thing seems to be a US size 6 ring. I bet if I took some sandpaper to this it would make for a nice ring. Well, I think if there ever was a spiffy ring, this is it. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but in person, this thing looks really nice. And it's kind of cool, it's got the teak from Athena there, and it's got that strip of carbon fiber in the middle. And if you think about it, what is carbon fiber but just an uncompressed diamond? To be completely honest, I've made more than one of those rings. These are just three that I happen to sand. I've got about a handful of them laying over by the CNC machine in various stages. But I wanted to make sure that I made one that was absolutely perfect. I'm gonna end this video here, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ava and I have some kind of live stream next Sunday with maybe some kind of big announcement, but uh, we'll see. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you!